Welcome everybody to the October 2019 edition of our Node.js and Oracle Database Office Hours. Standard safe harbor statement, don't do anything silly and make a purchasing decision based on what I say here today. Who are we? I'm Dan McGann, a developer advocate. I focus on the intersection of JavaScript and Oracle Database. We also have Anthony Tuninga. He is the lead developer on the Node Oracle driver, as well as many other scripting language drivers for Oracle Database. Christopher Jones is not here with us today, although he's the product manager for said drivers, as well as several other things. And Blaine Carter, who is also not with us today, is the developer advocate for open source software, and that, of course, includes Node.js. If this is your first Office Hours session, just a couple of pointers. First of all, the whole idea here is to give you a voice, tell us what you like, what you don't like, or just say hello. Each month we'll start with an icebreaker topic and then we'll get into some open Q&A at the end. And during the icebreaker topic, if you have any questions, please use the chat feature of Zoom to ask those questions. You'll see a little chat bubble in the bottom window of Zoom. If you don't see the chat bubble, it's probably hidden under more, so just click that and then select chat and ask your questions there. As for the icebreaker topic today, I actually want to touch on two things. First is the new always free cloud services for Oracle Cloud, OCI. And then I'll touch on a lab that is now available. It's for NoSQL or Soda APIs if you would like to kick the tires on those. So let's start with the always free services. This was one of the big announcements that came out of Oracle Open World. There's a new free tier, essentially. So in the past, what we had was a free trial. It lasted a month. You normally got $300 to work with, but at the end of that month, it was all gone. At this point, when you sign up for a trial account, that's no longer the case. There's now a set of services that will continue to work as long as you continue to use them. And that includes database services. This is Oracle after all. You get your choice. You can use the autonomous transaction processing or data warehouse service. You get two databases total. So you can do one of each or you can do two of the same. It's completely up to you how you configure that. So let me actually show you that now. So I am uh, also using this same service. And so I've uh, gotten my account. And when you log in with a, a new trial account, that has the free tier, you'll see these little boxes for various services that are eligible. And if I come to autonomous transaction processing and click create database, what you'll see uh, as I work through this, I'll call this test DB. You can select the type of uh, database you want, but down here you'll see this new option. If you toggle this on, you're saying basically configure me for the always free tier. So when you do that, you'll see that your storage comes down quite a bit, but this is still 20 gigabytes worth of data. So it's, uh, I think, still quite generous. Oops. Let me get my super secret password here, <laughs> and I'll paste that in. And so what I'm doing here, as you can see, when the database is created, an admin user will be created for us. I'm just setting that password. You can think of the admin user as sys essentially because that's a lockdown user in this service um, but while that's creating the database i'll continue on just talking a little bit about the free tier so i mentioned the databases that's what we're creating now you also get compute two virtual machines uh, each of which gets an eighth of an ocpu I'm not too sure how much power that is but for free i'm not going to complain they each get one gigabyte of memory each. You also get storage, so two block volumes, 100 gigabytes total, and 10 gigabytes of object, and 10 gigabytes of archive storage. So quite generous in terms of the storage. And then you also have a set of additional services. That includes a load balancer, which is pretty cool. You can configure the load balancer. If you're running Node in your compute VMs, you can configure the load balancer to balance off of these two VMs, which then, of course, point to your autonomous database service, but you get monitoring notifications and some outbound data transfer as well, all packaged in 
all always free. So a really, really nice service. And did I miss anything on that, Anthony? I don't think so, no. Nope. Okay. So hopefully the cloud service gods will be good to us today. I'm hoping it doesn't take a much longer than a minute to create this new database. Um, I should say one, one thing I can mention, if you're coming in from uh, always already having a trial account and you got that trial account started prior to the announcement at Open World for this pre-tier, unfortunately that trial account will not see the free tier. So just uh, go ahead and create a brand new trial account and you'll get everything bundled in with that. Um, otherwise what happens is, let's say you have the, the free services in your trial account, the way that it works, you'll basically, you'll have the normal trial. Uh, so you can use other services with that $300 free credit. At the end of the month, all of the paid services will simply stop working. And unless of course you convert your account to a paid account and start paying for those services. But if you leave it as a trial account, the paid services will stop working and then the always free services will simply continue to work. And at any point in time you wish to convert the account to a paid account to start to leverage other services or go beyond the quotas uh, quoted in the free service tier, then you can of course do that at any time. And of course, the cloud gods are not being nice to me today. Hopefully this won't take more than another minute. And there we are. All right. So I'm seeing questions roll into websites like Reddit, you know, how can I set up an XE instance on my laptop or, you know, configure it this way or that way. Honestly, I might have recommended that in the past or even to use what we call the Dev Day VM with virtual machine on a local uh, box. And you may still have a specific need for a local machine, but honestly, I think this is just the easiest thing you can do uh, at this point going forward. So as you saw, it just took a couple of minutes to create the database. Now what I want to show you is how you can connect to this database using Node.js. So the first thing you need to do is download the client credentials or wallet. And the reason for this has to do with the fact that this service makes sure that all of your connections are encrypted. So it's uh, the data safe moving across the wire. So this is an additional step that you might not have seen in the past had you been connecting to the database unsecurely, but that's not even an option with this service. So you just need to download those credentials. And I'll come over here to my downloads where we see them. And I'm going to extract them. And you see this folder here. Inside of that, you get a number of different things, uh, including a TNS names at Aura. And you'll see there are a number of different names for different uh, services. The one you're going to use for most applications is the underscore uh, TP for transaction processing. Uh, but there's also a SQLnet.Aura. And so one of the first things you're going to need to do is edit the SQLnet.Aura. What you'll find is that the directory it's pointing to by default is not a valid directory. So the question is, where are these files? Where is the wallet? And of course, they're in this directory. So I'm going to right click here, go to copy the path. And then I will open this in a text editor. And we'll just replace this path with the correct location. Make sure you leave those double quotes around it. We can close that out now. As for the demo app, what I have are just two files here. So you, we can see um, the actual application I'm going to run for the test. I'm bringing in Oracle DB. I'm bringing in the config file that was in the same directory. And all I have is a function called run test. I get a connection using the config info to the database, use that connection to execute a very simple select star from dual, and just log out the result the console and then close the connection. If I look at the config file, what you'll see is normal configuration details. I'm uh, often using this to create a pool. In this case, these values are ignored. What you want to pay attention to are these first three settings. So the first, of course, is the username admin because the admin account was created for us by default. The password I used was my super secret password here. 
And then for the connect string, what I want to use is test, oops, test db underscore tp for transaction processing. You can just check the tnsnames.org for other strings that you might want to use from time to time. So we'll save that and I'll go ahead and open up this directory and a terminal. And the first thing I'm going to do is npm install Oracle DB. So that's ready to go. And you might make this mistake if you just go to run the test, what you'll find is that uh, it could not resolve the connect identifier specified. And the reason for that right now we have we have test, which brings in config. Config is pointing to the correct service name, but there's nothing currently saying where those service names are defined. And so what we need is to set an environment variable, TNS admin. And what we need to set that to is the location of the folder that contains the tnsnames.ora. So I'm just going to right click here again, go to copy path. We'll come back here and just say export TNS admin equals, paste that in. And now we'll run our test again. And as you can see, uh, we got our data back. So just a few minutes to spin up a database and just a few steps to get connected in a secure fashion. Hopefully you'll agree this is a pretty exciting service, forever free. Uh, how could it not be exciting? So pretty cool. And the next thing I wanted to show you is a lab. This is a lab that I ran at Open World or Code One. It's basically a lab that utilizes the new NoSQL or SODA, Simple Oracle Document uh, APIs that we have for Oracle Database. If you want to start using Oracle Database as a document store, this lab is a pretty good way for you to kick the tires. It's also a good way to learn maybe a little bit about Docker and some other cool technology, even PM2 is in there. All you have to do is go to this URL to check it out. I already have that open here. And so I'll point out just a few things. Uh, first, once you get there, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner is a navigation menu. So you can use that to skip around the various modules. There are five different modules. As you can see, some of them are pretty quick and easy. The meat and potatoes is really module four. This is where you'll start using those SOTA APIs for doing various CRUD operations. And the other modules are just sort of creating an, a database, creating a, a database user uh, for the application specifically because you don't want to use the admin account for everything. Uh, and then bundling up the Docker image and running that. And the last module just touches on some SQL features that we have for JSON now in the database that show you how you can use both relational as well as JSON and Oracle now uh, incredibly easily. So hopefully you will find that of use. And I think that's all I have. I just wanted to point that out. We'll put the, the link in the Office Hours site as well. So you'll have that available there. All right, it is now over to you. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat and shoot them our way and we'll get them answered as soon as we can. All right, I am not seeing any questions come in. It appears we have a shy group today. We'll go ahead and call it here. Just wanted to say thank you everybody for coming and we hope to see you next month for our new office hours. Hopefully we'll touch on some soda content, uh, maybe a little bit more in depth. Thanks again, see you next month. Take care. See ya. Bye.